Hi, and welcome to this MeshBrush tutorial video. For those of you who don't know what MeshBrush is, it's a Unity Editor extension useful for painting your favorite meshes and prefabs into your scenes. It makes level designing in Unity so much more pleasant and fun. You can create your own brushes with maximum customizability and control over how you want your terrains, landscapes, meshes to be decorated with detail meshes. Think of it like a 3D brush with which you can quickly brush things like rocks, grass, vegetation, boxes, basically anything that can be a prefab into your scenes instead of having them, having to place them manually. And for those who already own MeshBrush, please, please note that version 1.9 is the biggest MeshBrush update ever made. I rewrote the entire codebase basically from scratch, making the API way more runtime friendly and easy to integrate into projects. All the functions can be accessed and the complete source code is provided, as always. The template saving and loading system has been rewritten from scratch too. What does, it, what does it mean for you? Well, if you have a previous version of MeshBrush installed, make sure to back up your templates and then completely delete the root MeshBrush folder before importing version 1.9. Perform a clean install and your templates, well, don't worry. Even though the old format is not compatible anymore with the new template system, you can still port them. I wrote a migration utility for you to easily convert the old templates to the new format non-destructively. Check out these templates from previous versions for instance. To migrate them to the new template format, select them and click on Game Object, Mesh Brush, Migrate Selected Templates. There you go, freshly formatted templates. For more information about the cool new features in version 1.9, check out the release notes PDF included in the Documents folder. Without any further ado, let's dive right into the technical stuff. First of all, to paint prefabs onto a mesh, select the surface onto which you want to place meshes. Then, go to Game Object, Mesh Brush, Paint Meshes on Selected Game Object. Keep in mind that the object onto which you want to paint meshes needs to have a collider of some sort in order for Mesh Brush to work. If you don't have a collider, Mesh Brush is going to ask you if you want to let it add one for you. It's going to be a mesh collider in that case. Every mesh brush instance has a group name, which also dictates the name of the parent mesh holder. You can have multiple mesh brush groups per object. They are going to appear under the root game object on which you're painting. If you don't want to paint meshes exclusively onto one specific surface, you can also choose to paint globally into the scene with the global painting mode, which you can find under game object, mesh brush, global painting. While in global painting mode, you'll notice there's an additional menu at the top of the inspector. Here you can select onto which layers you want to paint meshes and which ones will be filtered. When painting with multiple brushes at the same time, you can collapse the mesh brush inspectors with this collapsed toggle without losing control. Lock scene view is useful if you use your mouse or tablet as painting input key. It avoids accidental deselection whilst painting and maintains your scene view in focus. MeshBrush needs the scene view to be active and focused in order to work. You can entirely disable a brush with this toggle right here. When disabled, you won't be able to paint with that brush and or modify its settings. Now, under the templates foldout, you find the necessary functionality for saving and loading your favorite mesh brushes and configurations. The entire inspector, meaning all the various brush settings, are saved into a well-formatted, and easy to read and parse XML file. To save a mesh brush, click on the floppy disk icon here and choose a path. To load a template, click here and select the template to load. Only valid mesh brush template files will be loaded. When loaded, the template will override the current brush settings. On the right, we have the favorite templates list, which is persistent across all mesh brush instances. It allows you to save your favorite templates for quick and easy access. You can add the templates to the favorites list either by dragging and dropping them into the blue plus field, or by clicking on it and selecting it via the dialog file picker. The C button clears the favorites list. And now comes the interesting part, the set of meshes to paint. Go here under meshes and check out this piece of UI. You can choose between modern and classic UI. The classic UI is there for legacy reasons and resembles the previous mesh brush set of meshes to paint UI. For this tutorial, we're going to stick with the modern UI as it offers more cool stuff like drag and drop, interactive controls and simplicity. To paint meshes, 
all fields inside the set of meshes to paint have to be assigned. If you have any null fields, remove them first or assign them. If you have multiple null fields in the set, you can easily clean them up with the Clean Unused Fields button. To assign a mesh to a field in the set, just drag and drop the prefab into the field. To clear a field, middle mouse click it. To entirely remove a field from the set, right click it. When left clicking a field, the link prefab will be pinged inside the project view, except if the field is null. If it's null, an object picker pop-up will appear with which you can choose a mesh to assign to the field. To add a field to the set of meshes to paint, either click the blue plus icon and an empty field will be added to the set, or directly drag and drop a prefab into the plus field. The minus button will remove the last field from the set, from the button. X will clear all fields, thus nullifying them. C clears the array, removing all the fields from the set of meshes to paint. With the precision placement mode, you can do your precision work. You can activate it with this button and place a single mesh with maximum comfort and precision in the scene. You can cycle through your set of meshes to paint with the B and N key. B to cycle backward, N to select the next mesh. Once you have chosen which mesh to place, confirm the location with the paint button. Then move your cursor away from and to the center of the brush to adjust the scale of the mesh. Once that's confirmed, drag your cursor horizontally to adjust the rotation. Finally, in the last step, you can drag the cursor vertically to offset the mesh along its local y-axis. Now in the last step, if you confirm right now, the mesh is going to be placed as is and mesh brush will return back into the standard mesh paint mode. But if you want to place more than one mesh with the precision placement mode, keep the shift key pressed when confirming the last offset adjustment. Under the key bindings foldout, you can customize your keyboard shortcuts and to use the mouse or tablet input, select mouse zero for the left mouse button. In the brush settings foldout, you'll find settings like color, radius, quantity, and so on. The color is useful if you have multiple mesh brushes active on one object and want to distinguish between them. But it can also be useful if you are painting on a super bright surface where a white brush would appear invisible. The radius determines the size of the brush in meters. These sliders can be split up into ranges by the way. Just pull one of the two handles away to define the minimum and maximum value. A random value between those will be picked at each paint stroke. If you are unhappy with the slider's bounds and limits, at the top of the inspector click on this gear icon here and select Edit Range Limits. Here you can customize some of the slider bounds. When choosing the quantity of meshes to paint, you have to decide what is going to drive the density of the painted meshes. If you paint a fixed amount of meshes, the size of the brush is going to have influence on the final mesh density. Whereas with this constant mesh density toggle right here, you can select a mesh density in meshes per square meter. In this case, the radius won't affect the final density of the painted meshes. So no matter how big or small your brush is, you'll always have the same density. Offset offsets your painted meshes along their local y-axis. This is generally not needed and intended for fine-tuning purposes only, which is why the value is in centimeters. In general, you won't need this unless you really have some bad pivot placement going on in your meshes. Make sure to always place the pivot point of your meshes carefully and accurately in your modeling application for an awesome level designing experience with Mesh Brush. Scattering is a percentage that defines how far your painted meshes are going to be scattered away from the bar's center. A value of 100% scatters them out to the outermost edge of the brush whereas something like 50% will keep them from going further than halfway and keep them more densely together. The delay determines how much time in seconds passes between paint strokes. The lower the delay, the faster you'll be painting meshes when keeping the paint key pressed. You can also align your meshes with the direction of the paint stroke. This effect is easier to see when painting a single mesh without any rotational randomizers, but we'll get to randomizers in a second. The slope influence slider controls the orientation of your painted meshes. 100% slope influence aligns the meshes with their underlying slope. 0% keeps them upright. 
Everything in between interpolates between the two extremes. There is even a slope filter with which you can avoid certain angles. Think of this situation here, where you don't want your grass to appear in the cliff. Choose the angle threshold beyond which no meshes shall be placed. You can also exclusively paint meshes onto slopes by inverting the filter. Now, the grass would end up only on steep hills. By default, the reference normal vector used to compare the angles is the world y up axis. To change that, take a look at this test asteroid. Let's say I want the meshes to appear only on this side. Select manual reference vector sampling and sample the side where you want the meshes to appear. Now, the angle threshold will be calculated based on this normal vector. Since version 1.9, you can sample multiple normal vectors by keeping shift pressed. The average vector will be picked after confirming. Now, let's go over to the randomization part. You can randomize the rotation and scale of your painted meshes easily with these randomizers. Move the slider and choose the desired scale range. You can also affect each scale axis individually by disabling scale uniformly. The random scale curve is a curve that controls the scale of the painted meshes based on their distance to the brush circle's center. Time equals zero, the left side of the curve, translates to the circle brush center. Time equals one, the right side of the curve, is the outer edge of the circle brush. The scale value of the painted meshes will be multiplied by the established curve value, meaning that if the curve value is one, then the scale will be unaffected by the curve. This can be useful if you want to achieve an effect like, for example, shrinking the painted meshes the closer they get to the circle brush edge. The variation field is the allowed error margin for the scale curve value. A random value will be picked between minus variation and plus variation and added to the evaluated curve value. It's best to keep this value as low as possible, something like between 0 and 0 0.2. Setting this value too high would make the scale curve meaningless in the first place, since it would randomize the scale of the painted meshes in a way such that the effects of the curve-driven scale aren't even visible anymore. The random Y rotation amount rotates your painted meshes around their local Y axis. 0% will keep them at their default rotation, and 100% will fully randomize their rotation around 360 degrees. Then, let's see, with version 1.9, you have a new randomizer brush. You can randomize already painted meshes with it, retroactively. The default key for the post-paint randomization is J. You can randomize the following three transform properties. The overlap filter is useful if you want to set the minimum absolute distance in meters between your painted meshes. This is super useful if you want to avoid extreme overdraw and keep a safe distance between your meshes. But watch out, this feature is kind of heavy and performance unfriendly when used in large groups. Only activate it when it's really strictly necessary and perhaps consider splitting your groups up in many small ones. Meaning not to have everything in one mesh brush container at once, which is better anyway, also for organizational purposes. Then there's also the option to additively add scale to the painted meshes with this slider. The scale will be added after the placement, scale and rotation of the painted meshes. Once you're done painting meshes, you can either optimize your scene by flagging your painted meshes as static to enable static batching where possible, or by combining the painted meshes. Combining cannot be undone, so be careful with this. You can either combine all the painted meshes at once, or locally, only the meshes inside the brush area. The default key for that is K. The delete all painted meshes button is also an optimization. Well, in that no meshes obviously perform better than some meshes. Does it even make sense? Well, sometimes it's just nice to start over again. So with this, you don't have to set up your brush again. Oh, and this auto-ignore raycast toggle can be useful if you want to avoid the meshes to stack up on each other when painting in global painting mode on the same spot over and over. It automatically sets the layer of all painted meshes to ignore raycast. So that's it, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy MeshBrush. For more information you can check out the documentation PDF, which also has been rewritten from scratch, 
the chips with MeshBrush. And perhaps also keep an eye on the release notes PDF between updates. Have a great time and cheers.